Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Andy Clegg. I'm a consultant geriatrician and clinical lead for dementia at Bradford Teaching Hospitals. Uh, so our, our vision uh, is a seven-day discharge to assess model of acute care for people with dementia uh, and delirium um, that we will co-design with patients and their, their carers. Our model will address a core challenge that, that, that isn't limited to, to Bradford and Airedale. Uh, it's a, a challenge that's faced by every NHS organisation across the country. Uh, so I'll try and art articulate the, the problem. So we know that currently 25% of acute uh, NHS beds uh, are occupied by people with dementia. We also know that those people are at increased risk of inpatient harm, they're increased, uh, increased risk of length, longer length of stay uh, and delayed transfers of care. Um, the other problem that goes along with that is that current acute NHS care is predicated on the basis that people with dementia have hospital-based assessments, but hospital-based assessments for people with dementia are entirely the wrong approach. People with dementia should be being assessed in their home environment. So that's what our discharge mod to assess model, uh, that, that, that's the problem that we will uh, look to solve through our, through our model. We have in place already um, existing in infrastructure to ensure successful delivery. So we're almost ahead of the curve, if you like, because we already have a discharge to assess model in place for frail older people. But it's interesting because looking at that data, although we know that 25% of people in hospital will have dementia, only 5% of people in our current discharge to assess model have cognitive problems, so cogn cognitive impairment or dementia. So that identifies an opportunity to actually change the way of working uh, to, to apply the discharge to assess model, but, but, but joined up for, for people with, with dementia uh, and delirium. And we plan to do that by aligning our existing uh, discharge to assess model with mental health and the voluntary sector. Um, we also have in place an, a shared integrated care record that, that currently works for our discharge to assess model that will adapt uh, to the context of, of dementia. Um, alongside that, we're, we're, we're recognised as a national leader in dementia care at, at Bradford through a range of initiatives that, that, that we've led over, over the last five to ten years. Um, and critically, um, we do not see this as a Bradford and Airedale solution. We don't see this as a West Yorkshire or Yorkshire solution. We see this as an NHS solution for the care of people with dementia in hospitals, which isn't confined to elderly care wards. It, it's, it, it crosses into cancer care, cancer wards. It crosses into surgical wards, vascular surgery, urology wards. So it's a, it's, it's a model that's applicable, not just in Bradford and Airedale, but across the NHS. And through our vanguards, we'll develop the implementation resources to enable all of you to deliver this model of care at your local hospital. So we thought the best way to, to illustrate our, uh, our, our model would be through a, a brief scenario. So if you will, if I can just relocate you all to, uh, to a general medical ward in an acute hospital. So just imagine a 70 year old gentleman, Roberto. Uh, he's been in hospital for, for three days following an admission with delirium caused by a urinary tract infection and dehydration. His, sim his, 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 his problems have been treated, um, but he, he still has some residual symptoms. So he's, he's had a tendency to wander on the ward. Uh, and at times he's agitated, uh, and has, has been particularly agitated in the, in the evening time. Hi, my name is Danielle Wood. I am the uh, lead nurse for dementia at Bradford Hospitals uh, Foundation Trust. Following on from uh, Dr. Clegg's uh, ward round, um, Roberto, um, the main problems that the staff are reporting is he's becoming more agitated and more wondersome on an evening time. Um, haven't seen his wife, uh, Maria, on the ward. So what I have done is put a referral into the mental health team and my other colleagues through OT and physio, but this is going to delay um, our discharge process over the next few days. Hello, my name is Chris North. I'm the team leader for the Older People's Mental Health Liaison Service in Bradford. Um, I work for Bradford District Care Trust. We've received a referral for Roberto from one of the medical wards. Uh, we've been alerted to the fact that he has a dementia diagnosis, but he's never come through our services before, so we've got no other information on him. Uh, we're aware that he's got a resolving delirium, so we're a bit reluctant to assess at the moment as it won't be a true reflection of, of his abilities and needs. Uh, we've tried contacting the wife, but she's got fairly limited English. Uh, we were having to wait for a response from uh, her daughter, Sophia, for, for more information. Though she has indicated to us that she's been struggling for a number of months. As a result, uh, we've advised the ward to refer on social services for full needs assessment. Though, of course, this will introduce a, uh, a bit more delay until that assessment is completed. Hello, my name's Neil Courtman. I'm the Dementia Support Manager for the Alzheimer's Society. And at the moment, I'm just on the phone to Sophia, who's Roberto and Maria's daughter. 
I'm sorry, Sophia, I didn't know that Roberto was in hospital. How are you and your mum doing? No, that's fine. If I've got your consent, I'll get in touch with the hospital on your behalf. And also, if it's OK, I'll talk to, I'll talk to Maria. So I've got in touch with the hospital, and obviously there are some issues there around confidentiality, so they don't want to tell me that much. But I've let them know that we're aware of who Roberto is. I've passed on that he's been known to us now for three years with a diagnosis of mixed dementia. He is originally of Italian origin, and he is now reverting back to his original language of Italian. Maria is, isn't very assertive, so she will need a little bit of encouraging around her needs. And I've contacted Maria just around support from her dementia support worker. They've had support ongoing from a dementia advisor and dementia support worker in the past. Uh, so uh, you can see that the, as things currently stand, there's delay introduced at, at every level. And so often you find yourself a week down the line and you're no further forward, really. And people, so people have spent a week in hospital. So Roberto spent a week in hospital. Things haven't really moved forwards. Um, and he may have had inpatient falls or, or deteriorated, deconditioned on the ward. So um, six, month six months after implementation uh, of our new model of care, if you take the example of Roberto being admitted, uh, we would access his integrated care record. We would find out that he's already known to the voluntary sector uh, organisations who are supporting him at home. So three days into his admission, he would go home and receive all of his assessments in the home environment. Uh, through the model, we anticipate that we can save, uh, in the first 12 months, 1,000 acute bed days uh, based on our current uh, model and extrapolating that to mental health and acute services. So to summarise... One, this is the opportunity to develop a replicable discharge to access model of care for people with de dementia and delirium. Two, our proposal will give capacity to redesign a clinical care pathway for people affected by dementia in acute care settings with reduced length of hospital stay, increased person-centered care and choice. And three, create with active participation of all stakeholders the resources and evidence for implementation across the NHS. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm starting to feel like Simon Cowell or something up here. Could I have the um, questions for Bradford, please? Over here, table number nine. Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah, there's a just coming. Great presentation, thank you very much. Um, so I'm Callie Palmer from the Royal Marsden. Um, a really good clinical model, completely logical. Um, what are the levers and incentives you think you'd need in your accountable clinical network, just in case there's some shared learning for us? Because what I was less clear about is what you need from the vanguard, yeah. what, what changes yeah. you need to bring in this great clinical model. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the, the model that we, would, that, we would, uh, that we would take an accountable clinical network model um, to, 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 to provide us with the, the, the impetus to, to actually change uh, the processes of care. Um, I mean, the, the big lever is the fact that 25% of acute bed days, are, uh, NHS beds are occupied by people with dementia, that is the lever. And we know that those people stay in hospital longer and we know that those people have increased risk of inpatient harm. That is the driver to, to changing the practice through implementation of this model. Thank you. I can't see any further hands up. Any questions? Wow. Just over here, table number 26. Julie Tasker, a patient representative from Nottinghamshire. Um, if your uh, patient hasn't got any voluntary sector um, involvement already and they're not known to anyone, how will they be processed or whatever? I th thank you for that question. We, um, we, we actually cut our presentation short a bit because we could see the three minutes and one minute things coming up. But I was going to go on to explain that what would have happened in the new model uh, is that as Roberto got discharged home, um, I would see from a mental health perspective whether or not somebody had voluntary sector involvement. If they did in Robert's case, Roberto's case, we could contact them directly and say, what's your involvement? What are the issues? What are the likely support needs? If they hadn't, um, the, there would still be a mental health response and the difference would be is that we would go and assess Roberto and his family uh, within his home setting so that then we would actively begin coordinating the response to that family's needs. So it would be 
a, you know, a, a call to the dementia advisors at the Alzheimer's Society. We were acutely aware that his wife Maria is in need of support as well, so we'd be actively uh, coordinating input from carers' resource. And if there were day-to-day -day support, practical needs, we'd be making the referral to social services. So the difference it would make is that at day three, we would actively be beginning to coordinate the community support package that would be required to get Roberto back home and maintain him in his, in his usual environment. Any further questions? Okay, here, table number six. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Nick Bray, uh, um, community sort of uh, person. Um, yeah, it's, um, there was a hint of um, third party organisation there, and I do have, um, and this is not specific to you, but it is just across the board, um, about data protection between the NHS and third party organisations, and also other third parties involved, say like family members. Could you elaborate how you would attempt to tackle that? Yeah, again, because we had to cut short, unfortunately, very much part of what we're talking about is a single single record, basically. And, and because we're not just talking about across NHS bodies, we're also into including other areas as well. We are very mindful of the issues of data protection and involving both the, both the person with dementia and the carers at all aspects in terms of allowing them to, to define what they want. Um, to actually disclose uh, at any point as well. Uh, having been a data protection officer myself in the past, I'm very aware of, of what, the, what the actual uh, the needs are there as well. So we have, we have information governance protocols in place across all the various parties in Bradford. This is one of the aspects that we're looking for from Vanguard, is about, is about being able to actually firm those up, because I think that's one of the issues that's been coming across very clearly. Those, that's where we need a little bit more help as a, nationally uh, for organisations, just to be able to firm some of those issues up. The other thing was, thing was around evaluation as well, that we have very, very active, both person with dementia and carer involvement within, our, within Bradford as a whole. Um, we, f uh, we have to work as well on, within the Vanguard project. We can very much evaluate the people utilising the system. One of the things that we want to do, not just people on the ward, but also people that potentially might use the ward. That's the issue around evaluation. It's very easy to capture people when they're actually using your service. You want to be able to capture the people that aren't using your service as well, but may do in the, in the future. So that would be some of the things we'd be looking for, for help for in the future as well. Thank you. That's the end of our time for questions. So can I have a big thank you, a big round of applause for the Bradford Teaching Hospital. <laughs>